Hey, Facebook. Swipe from the hip right at you. Getting ready for our show tonight. Coach is coming up here. Jason is MIA today. He's got some business side to do for this Straight from the Hip podcast. So he is taking care of some business. So it'll be coaching I tonight. So we'll just be us two. So we're going to get started here in a few minutes and get going. What's going on, fam? Let me get in here. Jeff's got his microphone on. Three minutes until showtime. My face and everything. I can't even see. Can't even see the people. Let's see here. What a message is that, Travis? How come we can't do a message? What a message is that? Oh, what I do? Hold on. Hold on back here. I just don't see the message. All right. Is that it right there? And the polls. I don't know. There's eight people out there, but we can't see what they're saying. All right. I can see it on, the, on my computer. Okay. I don't know what's going on. Two minutes until show time. Oh, that might be the playback. Kill that. It's going to mess up everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that is. All right, fam, we're here. We're trying to be able to see y'all's comments. I see about 80 of y'all out there right now. So we about to get started. Travis, I messed up something on the way. Oh, here. yeah, my fault. Let me hit the end live, and then we, we hit it and see what happens. Somebody called defects and filed a case on Jason. Child abandonment for leaving this, this child with me, uh-huh. along with me, to do this show. Y'all know what's going to happen. Y'all know what's going to happen. It's going to be a killing in here. Mm-hmm. One minute until showtime. We're going to be right back, guys. Hold on. You only got one minute. I know. Don't end it. You ain't going to have a chance to get back. Jason's gone and the place goes to hell. I know it. Travis done tore up something, guys. I don't know what he did. I was trying to get my mental preparation downstairs. <laughs> yeah, downstairs the whole time. Trying to raise my voice tonight. Trying to trying to keep it keep it cool. I need to know who's on there. I need to know Terry's. I know Terry's on there. Oh, uh, Mo Goody, Brad Davis, Richard Hood, Terry Davis. I'm glad Mo Goody's on there. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. No, Jason. No music. Travis ain't got any music. Oh, you know, I thought you were going to give me some Rage Against the Machine or whatever it is you listen to. Dolly Parton. I don't listen to any of that. Conway Twitty, whatever it is you listen to. I don't, I don't even know who Conway Twitty is. Yeah, you do. You no, know. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Um, uh, Brooks and Dunn, something. Garth Brooks, whatever it is you listen to. Do I look like I'm I thought maybe. A, yeah, I thought I was going to get some of that. Or something. Don't ask that question. Don't ask that question. I mean, sitting up here with that wider mustache. <laughs> <laughs> and go ask if you listen to country. I mean, what else do we think you listen to? I mean, that's it. I mean, hey, let's do a poll. What kind of music y'all think Travis listens to? Out there, Decula, that he's so proud of. Out there, Country Bumpkin, Decula. Talking about hey. what kind of music do I listen to? Y'all be shaming yourself. Welcome to Straight from the Hip. I'm your host, Coach Gerald Boo Mitchell, coming to you live from Sugar Hill, Georgia. Here with my co host today, Mr. Travis Butler. Jason, somewhere doing something. I think. Uh, Jason might be trying to be a superhero. I think so, too. Because he talks about black man all the time. Jason been 
coming up missing lately. Mm. So I think he might be out there be trying to do something. Okay. Um, he might be out there trying to be Fat Man or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know. Is he Black Man sidekick? I, I don't know. No, he can't be Black Man sidekick. <laughs> he probably has his own sidekick. I <laughs> believe uh, Mo Goodson be his, his sidekick. <laughs> Be a uh, baby fat. We call him Mogus and baby fat. <laughs> baby fat. Fat man and baby fat. How about that? <laughs> well, we're being brought to you by the Playbook. Yep. Follow us on Twitter at Playbook Athlete. Uh, lots of stuff going on today. How you doing, Travis? What's going on? What's going on in Travis's world? Oh, not much. I'm doing okay. Mm. Got a short week this week for me. So why is that? What's short week? What's that mean? I'm only working today and tomorrow. I got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off. Wow. So, yeah. Why is that? Why, why you got that off? I just had a few extra days I got to use before the end of the year. Mm. So, you know, company says I got to use them by the end of the least of the year. So I hate I'm, you. I'm taking a five day weekend this weekend. Wow. So, five right? day weekend. Five what day. you going to do? What you going to do? Uh, Christmas. Sit in the house. <laughs> Christmas shopping. I there gotta you go. go. I gotta five go. day weekend. You going to stay home? <laughs> I got to go to the day. Well, Megan's home. Listen, so what guess. you going to listen to at, at home? Conway Twin, Conway Teddy Christmas. Dave Matthews. Nobody but somebody who wears uh, who uh, who uh, listens to country music will wear a shirt like that. Yeah, Christmas is coming, y'all. Wow, well, who is that? Who is that picture? Of? Is that Rick Flair? Yes, it's Rick Oh my Flair. God! Wow, bless your heart. Yeah, who is Man, that? You gotta be ashamed of yourself. I would, I mean, you supposed to only wear that in your house. You're not supposed to wear that in public. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Rick Flair is fantastic. Just so you know. Okay, he's the man. Anyway, we got a lot to talk about today. You know, uh, folks, y'all know uh, what happened with North Connect. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But let, let's start off with the first and 15. Talk about some of the hot topics of the week. Uh, first topic, and hopefully y'all were out there on uh, the YouTube channel. Folks, y'all can go out to the YouTube channel and subscribe, and it doesn't cost you a dime to subscribe. All you got to do is just go out there, yep. look at it. Jason's dropping content. Uh, he's going to teach me how to do it. You know when I start dropping, it's going to be fire out there. I dropped when content I dropping, on Saturday, by the way. For the, yeah, you did pull a little something, something out right? there. Yeah. It, it was it was okay. I mean, I was glad you only you were brief. I was brief. Which, About 30 which, seconds to a yeah, minute. Which, so. which was very good. Yep, yep. So, uh, so Travis dropping a little content out there. Jason dropping some. I'm, I'm, I'm about to get into it. Okay. Now the season's finally over. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start dropping some dimes out there, start, you know, doing my thing out there. But anyway, uh. One of the videos Jason put out there, and I thought was very good. I, it, it, it's about three minute maybe or so video was about uh, Tim Ryan, yep. uh, the commentator for the uh, San Francisco 49ers, was talking about Lamar Jackson, and uh, you know basically he was saying that uh, because of Lamar Jackson's dark skin, it was good for him because it you know kind of clashed with the color of the football. Mm -hmm. And so he was able to hide the ball better, you know, doing play action and things like that. Right. And uh, Richard Sherman came out and kind of did a little Captain Saber bro, if you will, <laughs> and uh, defended Tim Ryan for his comments uh -huh. and whatnot. And Jason kind of took some exception to the fact that Richard Sherman felt like he had to do that and why Richard Sherman was okay with the comments of Tim Ryan Et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not going to spoil it for you. I want y'all to go out there and 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 look at what Jason said. My position on it is very similar to Jason. Maybe not as uh, as critical as Jason, but I do think that there's there's too much of that 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 goes on, and it's uh it's kind of what like uh, in Living Color used to have a segment on where the guy would come out and say, you know, hidden racism. Mm -hmm. You know, he would talk about. Why is it that there are no black M&Ms right. <laughs> you know, or, or something like that? You know, uh, whatever the case may be. But, but the bottom line is, is that there's kind of an undercurrent of mm -hmm. those things in athletics right? Um, where people say things and I think that they have to catch themselves, you know, while they're saying sometimes they catch themselves, sometimes they don't catch themselves at all. Right. It's just total ignorance that they don't even realize what they say is. And that's what he did because he, he said it live on, on yeah. the radio. And I think one of the, the common, you know, the, the radio host even kind of like tried to like help him to backtrack. Right. And he was all like gung ho, like, no, this is what I meant. Like, right. No, like I said, I just said what I said. So yeah. that, that was, it was crazy. So it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's really kind of a, a, a bad situation. Mm-hmm. But this, this is the only thing I will say to Jason. I haven't said it to him. I forgot he wasn't going to be tonight. I was waiting for us to have this on-air discussion. When you are in this, this thing that they call pro football, 
it's a business. It's it's a league. It's 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 the shield. And so I'm not so sure that either Tim Ryan himself didn't go ask Richard Sermon to make those comments as a personal favor. Right. Because obviously they have some kind of personal relationship. Yep. The Sherman felt like he needed to do that. Mm -hmm. Or if somebody from the 49ers organization didn't go to uh, Richard Sherman and say, hey, we need you to do this. You know, we need to get Tim out of this. Tim's a good guy. Mm -hmm. You know Tim. You've worked with Tim. Let's help Tim get out of this. He didn't really mean to say what he said. Right. Something along those lines. So I think that that, that could have happened. And I'm not saying that it did. I'm not saying it didn't. But I know that it definitely and possibly could have because I know many people who are in the NFL who say, hey, you know, I was asked to come make a statement for mm -hmm. the – for the organization, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it could be something like that. So I'm not ready to hang Richard Sherman just yet. Jason did say in his video all of the good things that, uh, you know, Sherman has done. Uh, he just now paid off uh, a bunch of debt for uh, free lunches or something they were doing uh, for kids and whatnot. So like I said, I mean, Richard Sherman's a good guy. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's always oh, yeah. been a good guy. You know, he's very well spoken, very much. Uh, Stanford graduate, yep. uh, you know, has his degree, all of those things. So, again, uh, like I said, we don't want to really, you know, I don't want to really condemn him to that degree yet. But we'll see how this thing pans out. Right. And like you said, like the San Francisco 49ers did come to him and say that. Yeah. Out of all the players for San Francisco – he is a name, you know, rec not recognizable name that the average NFL, you know, fan's going to know. Like I said, he's, you know, graduated from Stanford, very highly educated, mm -hmm. very smart, knows, you know, knows what to say, knows how to talk about, except for that interview with Aaron Andrews a few years ago. But yeah. that was still funny. But I think that was that, that you know, would have been a good choice if that's what they want, you know, we're trying to do to get a high profile name on their team to kind of back them up. Sure. You know? I agree. Yeah. Um, another thing we want to talk about in this segment is uh, a lot of movement is occurring, like as we as we knew it would, mm -hmm. with coaches. Coaches being hired, some being fired. Um, obviously, there's got to be a little of both to have one or the other. Right. So, uh, first, of course, with the big firings, you know, uh, Willie Taggart went out of Florida State. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like Florida State has their guy. Yep. Uh, I can't think of his name. They got the guy from uh, Memphis. Uh, Mike Norvell. Mike, Mike Norvell, Norvell, however you want to say right. it. Uh, he's the new guy at Florida State. He's the new uh, chief, I guess you could say it, at Florida State since they are the Seminoles. Y'all, that, that's a whole other topic about their nickname and all that other stuff. But they got a new chief. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Chief Norvell, Norvell, <laughs> whatever you want to say it is, yeah. he's the new guy down there. Okay. Um, and, and, and Jason's questions are, you know, how do you go into choosing a new coach? Right. Well, I can tell you right now, I know a little bit about this situation because I've spoken okay. to several college coaches about it. And in Florida State's case, the first thing you do is look at how much money you have. Right. Because they don't have a whole lot of money mm -hmm. to go get a coach. Yeah. It's kind of like, how do you go about choosing a new car? Well, first thing I do is look at my budget and see what I can afford. Yeah, look at the bank account. Now, if, if I've only got to... Um, Fifteen thousand dollars. Right. I can go by the Cadillac dealership if I want to, and look for a car, and hopefully they've got something that you know will fit my standards of what I'm mm -hmm. looking for for that price. Right. But the Cadillacs that Florida State went looking for, I've been told, are Bob Stoops. Okay. They tried to get Bob Stoops to come out of retirement. I heard that. Yep. And take the job, and uh, he turned it down. Okay. I also heard they tried to get James Franklin. Okay. From Penn State. Right. Oh. <laughs> That, that, that's like trying to get a Lamborghini right there. <laughs> and they sure didn't have enough money for that Lamborghini. No. So uh, so those were two guys that said no. And that's one thing you got to understand in all this. You would like to think, and I'm sure Mike Norville would like to think, I'm the first guy that they came after. Oh, yeah. You were not the first no. guy they came after. No. So don't, don't, even, don't even, even begin to try to fool yourself on that. So if you're okay with being a number three or the number five or the number ten guy that they picked, more power to you. Hey. Go in there, do your thing. Yep. Uh, make things happen, whatever. Hopefully but, you can make it work. Exactly. So that's one thing that they look at. And and, and that's something they got to look at really more so than anything else mm -hmm. is can we afford to bring in this guy? Because okay. Lord knows Florida State can't afford to 
get another milk nut to come in there. No, not at all. And uh, and you know, because they didn't kick the tires well enough and whatnot, and now they're having to pay off three coaches. Yep. And uh, because they're still paying Jimbo Fisher. Yep. They're still playing Willie Tiger. Yep. And now they got to pay this cat. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and they look like they're going to be paying uh, uh, Willie Tiger for a long time. Okay. So, I mean, the bottom line is is that Florida State's in a bad situation. Their facilities are not, are not what they need to be. I think they're in the they're in the top 25. I think they wind up being when when uh, ESPN ranked them, they're around 23. Okay. Maybe or 20 or somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when you look at programs like Clemson, which is in the top five. I think they're number two, yep. maybe even number one. Uh, Alabama, I think, is number four. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at these top programs that Florida State used to be because they were able to keep up with the Joneses, and now they can't keep up with the Joneses anymore. Right. I, I actually looked up yesterday because I was interested in, you know, I had heard rumors and you had, you know, read stories about, you know, the facilities at Florida State just weren't as adequate as a lot of the other top flight yeah, programs. They're not. They're not. Um, and, and just like you said, that they're not. But I actually read an article that said that they are planning on the athletic department is going to be putting in multi-million dollar investments starting like 2021 mm-hmm. to upgrade all their facilities sure. to make sure that they are, you know, at least, you know, up there and competitive, stay, yeah. as trying best to be state of the art as possible. So yeah. they are at least going to be trying to. That take about three years. It, it, it will. It yeah. will. Yes. So, so I'm, I'm I'm keeping it real because when you go to Florida State and see how beaten and broke down they are, mm-hmm. and then you go to Clemson, them jokes are got a bowling alley. Yep. And they got a, uh, a putt putt court. Yep. A putt putt golf course, a slide. They got all these things. They driving around in golf carts and on scooters and this that, and another. And you walk in that Florida State with a backpack on your back, and they give you a little game boy to, to play <laughs> game. <laughs> that ain't going to get it, dog. I can just tell you right now, that ain't going to get it. They, so They have to share an iPad between two players. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, dude, I mean, it, it, it's, it's rough. Oh, yeah. It's rough because in today's world, kids like all the, all, all the bling. Mm-hmm. It's about the bling. It's about the turnover chain. Well, it's about so. all that stuff. And uh, I have learned. And it's been hard for me to accept this, but I have learned you can get a high school football player to do just about anything if you promise him some gear. Swag bag. All you got to do swag rag. <laughs> All you got to do is tell him you'll get some Nike uh-huh. something, just gear. Uh-huh. And gear could be anything. It could be them little dumb sleeves, <laughs> which is ri- literally, literally scrap cloth uh-huh. that somebody sold together <laughs> that you can just slip over your arm and the joke be so happy about well, that dog on he looks cool about you? that sleeve he, he, you just don't even know yeah and i'm i'm saying and you can get kids that age mm-hmm. to do just about anything oregon for a long time was drawing in kids because they got so many uniforms because nike's out there phil knight's out there no, right they i think they had like 89 different combinations yep. of uniforms they could wear. Yep. Sickening. Yeah. But kids love that boy. They loved it. And kids love that. They, they would look legitimately wear a different uniform for every single game, and they still would have multiple uniform combinations. And kids loved it because they could be like, oh, I'm going to wear the all green or the yeah. all off white green or the all white. So yep. this and that and this and that. So. But anyway, I'm going to ring this bell because Travis is rambling. <laughs> and we, we it's time for us to take a break. See, see, I got the bill today. Uh huh. So y'all are in for a treat because I got the bill. Oh, okay. And when I got the bill, this thing will stay on time today. Anyway, you listening straight from the hip. I'm your host, Coach Gerald Boo Mitchell. Come to you live from Sugar Hill, Georgia. Here with my guest today, Mr. Travis Butler. Big J's not here. Nope. We don't know where he is. He and Mo Goody, I think, out fighting crime. Mo- fat man and baby fat. Yeah, <laughs> Mo- out fighting Mo- crime. On- Mo-, Mo Goody's on here today, so I'm. Yeah, but that could be anybody. Oh, okay. That, that's how Batman okay. used to always act like he was not Bruce Wayne. You used to have somebody logged in, signed in as him, making comments and all that while he out being okay. Batman. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. I so I, I wouldn't be surprised if Baby Fat ain't out there doing some some crime fighting. Okay. So uh, so we ain't going to fall for that. That could be Fee. If Fee mm-hmm. logged on, if Fee on the show. She is. Okay. See, that could be anybody. They got a, they got a son. And Tavion, is that Tavion? Tavion, is that you? Is that you logged in as your daddy? While he's out there fighting uh, crime uh, with Mr. Jason. Yeah. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. We're being brought to you by the Playbook. Follow us on Twitter at Playbook Athlete. Uh, a lot going on. We're going to go ahead and get into the game day portion. Come on. Real, real quick. Um, we 
I, if you missed the show the first 30 seconds, we cannot see comments. There's something going on with the Facebook. I do have it up down here on, on the floor. So if you see me looking down, I'm looking at the comments that you guys are posting. So I'm going to try my best to read them and, and, you know, so we can communicate, but yeah. it, it may be a little difficult. To Basically, keep, 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 the, keep the comments coming. Yeah, the technical side of the show kind of jacked up because Travis was on the ones and twos today because Jason went here to set it up. I'm just keeping it real. I don't have the ones and twos I'm keeping it real. Day. I'm going to keep it real. Every, yeah. every Monday I'm up I know, there? I know, but you didn't set it up by the song because <laughs> we can't see the comments. Anyway, come on, Travis. Let's do this uh, uh, game day and talk about game day a little bit. Let's do it. All right, in high school football, yep. 7A, yep. Marietta beat Parkview 42-31. Mm-hmm. I watched some of that game. Yeah, I figured Marietta was going to be a little too much for Parkview. Yeah. And Lowndes County beat North Cornette 49-28. We got the brace beat off us. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. And uh, Lowndes County is a good football team. Mm-hmm. We just didn't play very well. Um, folks, I can tell you this. Everything that could go wrong on the trip on the way down there, these are the things you don't know about. First of all, we took three buses. One of the buses got a flat tire on the way down there. Really? So we had to unload another bus that had the women and children on, literally. Okay. And have them wait with the bus that was getting repaired oh, and, and, and swap the players from the bus with the flat tire to get on the other bus to get that. It was just a nightmare. Is this Friday? Yeah, Friday. Okay. This Friday. Okay. This Friday. Friday. On the way okay. to the game, this is what happened. Okay. So we just had a disaster. You'll never hear about this outside of me talking to you about now. Mm -hmm. But it was just a disaster. And, I mean, the game obviously was a disaster. But one day when I write my book, I'll tell you all about what really happened because it was crazy. I mean, Coach Jackson came in, our offense going, and he said, dude, you would not believe everything that happened Mm -hmm. on the way here. Coach Jackson had a thumb drive that had his play call sheet on it and the thumb drive malfunctioned or something. So all of a sudden, they coming in the field house with a printer yeah. and a cup. I'm like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> and he's like, dude, are you, you ain't even going to believe what all has happened. So it was just madness. It was madness. Um, we think some corruption going on in Lowndes County because all of a sudden the, the, the thumb drive didn't work. Oh, no, no, it wasn't nothing like that. It wasn't nothing like that. No, 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 no. Yeah, okay. no, no, no. I take my hat off to Coach McPherson in Lowndes County. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, I mean, they'll coach team. Yeah. All the things that I said are true. And uh, good luck to them. I think they're going to beat Marietta. I, I can think, tell you that right now. I think so too. Uh, it'll be Lions versus Marietta in the uh, Saturday night at uh, Georgia State. 6A, Alatoona beat Richmond. Uh, 17-14, Richmond Hill. Mm-hmm. Harrison beat the Cula. The Cula. Down goes the Cula. Boo. So Harrison beat the Cula. So it will be Harrison versus Alatoona. Yep. I'm riding with Harrison on uh, that. I will go Harrison as well. Um, you just gonna you just gonna pick whoever. That's, that's, that's not true. That's, that's, that's not how true. You, that, you just try to play it safe. Uh-huh. It's one game you gonna go against me. Uh-huh. But other than that, you gonna ride. I know what you are gonna do. Okay. Five a. Why don't I? Why don't I pick my games first? Okay, go ahead. Recap. Go ahead. Buford beat uh Jones County twenty nine zero, and uh, Warner Robins. Be Stars Mill fifty five to three. I'm going Buford. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Warner Robins just because oh. you're going Buford. <laughs> exactly. I was gonna go Buford, but <laughs> I'm gonna go Warner Robins just because you did that. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Four A Blessed Trinity won forty six to twenty one over Woodward. That's your that's your shout out. Yeah, uh, that was my shout out team. I o- know. Oconee County beat Sandy Creek mm-hmm. in a very close game thirty five twenty eight. Yep. Who you got? Blessed Trinity. Yeah, I'm gonna go Blessed Trinity too on that. One. Okay. Uh, Cedar Grove beat GAC. Greater Atlanta Christian, yep, uh, 28 to 18. Chris County beat Jenkins 14 to 6. It's Cedar Grove versus Chris. Cedar Grove. Of course, it's going to be Cedar Grove. There ain't going to be no game either. <laughs> Cedar Grove going to beat the Brakes off Chris. Uh, Brooks County, 39 to 35 over Callaway. Okay. Close matchup. Another close matchup. Dublin over uh, Thomasville. So it's Brooks County versus Dublin. Brooks County. It's going to be Dublin. Dublin going to beat the brakes off Brooks County. Okay. Um, 1A Public, Irwin County beat Clinch, 36-0. Marion County beat Pelham, 42-25. Irwin. It's going to be Irwin versus Marion. Yeah, Irwin will win that one. Irwin. And in the private, Wesleyan won 56-20 over uh, Fellowship Christian. Mm-hmm. And Elka, E-L-C-A, beat uh, Holy Innocence. Um, that's Eagles Landing Christian Academy, by the way. Uh, so it's Wesleyan versus Elka. Wesleyan. I'm going to take Elka. Okay. Because Elka's been there before. They've already won a couple state championships. Yeah, so. okay. And I don't okay. think Wesleyan's been there. So we gonna, I'm going to go. I'm going to 
pick health. Okay. All right. So, with that being said, we're going to go right on into the game plan. Yep. Uh, this thing was called game plan, and the question that we have this week for the uh, game plan is, what does the offseason bring? Mm-hmm. What's going to happen now? Like, North Gwinnett, we just uh, – now, now, for some teams, the offseason started a month ago. Understand that. So, a month ago, some teams, it was, it was their last game. They didn't make the playoffs. Their offseason, quote, unquote, started then. Okay. Normally what happens in the offseason for most high schools, they'll let their kids rest mm-hmm. for maybe a week or so. Okay. So say maybe, you know, two weeks, to, 10 days to two weeks, mm-hmm. something like that. Then after that, they're going to start their winter training. Okay. And winter training consists of heavy weight lifting. Mm-hmm. You know, you're back on the grind. You're preparing yourself for the next year. Mm-hmm. And this is the time that you need to start adding strength. Okay. And you need to start getting your stamina built up. They'll do some running, a little bit of running, but the main emphasis right now is the weightlifting. Okay. But go ahead. I'm sorry. So, so one question I have is um, when I was in high school, I wrestled and mm-hmm. wrestled from when I was five all the way to the senior in high school. And we would have a few uh, football players that after the football season, they would join the wrestling team. Yep. Of course, <laughs> some of them didn't, and they did the offseason season. Right, right. Program. Some of them did basketball, you know, this, that, and the other. Right. Do you, as a football coach, want them to only stick to football and do your winter workouts, or do you have a problem with them going to do another sport like a wrestling, a basketball, a track and field and splitting, something like that? Very good question. I'm going to give you a very good answer, of course, because that's what I do. Uh-huh. Now, here's the thing about it. It's going to be different for every kid. Right. Because I, let's, let's take Jordan Hancock, for instance. Jordan Hancock. Uh, for North Gwinnett High School is a basketball player. Okay. He's about six foot one, maybe six foot two at the best. Mm-hmm. At, you know, he's a rising senior. Okay. He's a little bit undersized. He has many offers, just got offered by Alabama. He's been offered by Ohio State, all of those folks. If Jordan Hancock does not have the ability or have the desire to go on to try to play college basketball, he needs to drop basketball right now okay. and start preparing himself to be a college football player. Okay. So my advice to Jordan Hancock would be, dude, unless you're gonna grow six more inches, you know, in in the next year, right. then you're not you're not gonna play college basketball. Uh-huh. So even though I know you can dunk a basketball with your feet and you can jump out the gym and all that kind of stuff, you need to put down the basketball and focus on training to get yourself ready for the next level for football. And that would be my advice to Jordan Hancock. Now, if Jordan Hancock was six foot six mm-hmm. and had handles and everything else and could really play and was, you know, by his peer standards and everything else, was going to be going to the next level and could possibly play basketball, handle your business. Okay. But if you're not there, then you need to, yes, start getting yourself ready and do what the football team is doing. Okay. Same thing that goes for wrestling, that goes for baseball, that goes for whatever. Right. And I think what happens is, Parents need to be realistic. Like, I talked to mom the other day, and she said, gosh, I'm going to miss watching him playing that basketball and out there dribbling that basketball. He's not a basketball player. Okay. I mean, the boy's still shooting the ball from his hip, some okay. of these kids. And if you're still shooting the ball from your hip when you're in high school, you know you're not going to be a, a, a LeVar Ball. Mm-hmm. I mean, it ain't working for LeVar Ball anymore. He's trying to learn how to shoot the ball from up here instead of shooting the ball from his hip. Exactly. I mean, I'm just keeping it real yeah. with you guys. Yeah. So the bottom line is, is that, you know, you got to go where your bread is going to be buttered. Now, okay. if you're a parent who's saying, I'm not, I don't care about my kid getting a scholarship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, what if you're just average Joe student, you know, on the football team, maybe second Knock or third yourself string. Out. Knock yourself out. You go out there and have all the fun you want to have. Okay. But the bottom line is, is that when it's time to play football, we're going to let you know. Because, you know, basketball really with AAU and all that mm-hmm. goes year round. Right. And I'm not going to let you run around and chase that basketball and stuff for, for when it's football time. Right. So when it's football time, when somebody gets there, I'm going to tell you it's football time. Okay. And then you're going to have to make a decision. Okay. So, that, that, I mean, that's just kind of the way that is. Football is, is way too competitive mm-hmm. here in the South oh, yeah. to be to be letting folks do that. Because okay. that, that's how you mess around and uh, not even have a team. Right. But, or have a good team because you got – you know, five or six year stud players running around out there trying to play basketball and do this mm-hmm. or, or running track or doing this and that and the other. And the bottom line is, is you got to get them kids ready and got to get their bodies prepared 
because like they say, when that count is the SEC or high school football, right. and your body takes a pounding. Okay. You know, when, you, when you're when you doing this uh, this level of football, especially when you're talking about 7A football, and you got uh, kids running around here like the kids we just played at Lowndes County, six foot six, mm-hmm. 330 pounds. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it takes a lot to get ready for some of that. Right. And, uh, and, and we weren't ready to tell you that right now. Uh, Ms. Goodson says that a lot of colleges actually like to recruit Athletes that are dual sport athletes. Oh, they do. Oh, no doubt. They they like to recruit. They like to recruit them because they are very athletic. Now, ask those same colleges if they want them to come to their school and play both sports. They're gonna tell you, hell no. <laughs> when you get here, you ain't playing no baseball. Right. You ain't playing no basketball. Yeah. But yeah, they 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 want to rec- uh, because obviously, if you've got that kind of athleticism where well, you can be a great wrestler and a great football player, mm-hmm. or you can be a great wrestler, a great football player, and a great basketball player, whatever, the more you can do, bring it on, baby. They love it. Yeah. They love to see a big lineman that can go up there and slam it. You think they're going to let that lineman play basketball? Mm-hmm. Man, you crazy as hell. <laughs> Ain't going to happen. So, yeah, Fee, you're right. They like it, but they don't endorse them actually coming to school and, and, and playing both sports, I'm telling you. Yeah. Now, smaller schools, maybe, for instance, the box boys. They left Peachtree Ridge. They went to Lenore Ryan, which is a small college up in North Carolina. Okay. And they were allowed to play both lacrosse and football. And they did both very well. Okay. And smaller schools might allow that. The bigger schools, Ohio State. How many people play dual sports up there at Ohio State? And <laughs> how many people play dual sports at Georgia? And I mean, every now and then you'll have one that, you know, I think Cameron Hayward, when he first went to Ohio State, okay. tried to play. Uh, basketball and football, okay. oh, they shut that down. Yeah, they shut that down. The the, the 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 probably the most famous one within the last probably twenty years is of course Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. Um, he did baseball, I believe, and and football. Well, so did Kyler Murray. And Kyler Murray yeah. did, yeah. And I know, like, um, uh, South Carolina, we had a kid that two two three years ago was a tight end and played power forward for the men's basketball team. And did that for about two years, and then Frank Martin, the basketball coach, basically said, "You got to pick one of the yeah. other because yeah. it, 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 it's too hard on you, and it's too hard on the you know the football and the the basketball coaches because we not that we don't know when you're going to come, but you know we both need you sure. at, at different times sure. of the year. I'm just saying, and, and it's, it sometimes can have some tension in the program between the football program and the basketball program mm-hmm. because a kid is playing both sports. Right. And, you know, one feels like, okay, y'all having a little bit too much. So, you know, we really need that kid right now to do this, and y'all are holding him over there to do that. I'm telling you, it, it, mm-hmm. it, it can be contentious. Oh, yeah. Even on the high school level, I've seen it the same way. Okay. You know, especially when it comes to track, because, you know, the football coach looks down at the track end, and he sees the kids sitting around not really doing anything. He's like, dude, I need them kids doing something. You know, if they were down here with me, they'd be, you know, doing this and this and this. They're down there with you, mm-hmm. rolling on a roller down yeah. there, whatever. Yeah. And that, that's not going to get it. So it can it can cause a little, little bit of drama and whatnot yep. between uh between different sports. Yeah, uh, uh, Miss PV, yeah, uh, James Winston, that's another example. He did the same. He, he played, did. He played baseball he and, did. and and uh, and football. I mean. Yeah, you see, that's working out real well. <laughs> so that's a bad example, Miss PV. <laughs> That's a bad example right there. I thought it was a good example, so I wanted to shout yeah, it out. I know. Go ahead. You you, I'm, you didn't shout out your daddy today. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Hi, Dad. Yeah, there I you go. I, I, there you go. Anyway, ding, ding. That's a good That's a good time to shut down. Exactly. Folks, it's time for our mid-break. You listen straight from the hip. I'm your host, Coach Gerald Boo Mitchell, coming to you live from uh, Sugar Hill, Georgia. Jason Allen and Mo Goody are out saving the world somewhere tonight. His little sidekick. Uh, fat man and baby fat, they're handling their business tonight. So y'all, y'all be on the lookout for them out there somewhere. Um, I'm sure they'll be hard to miss. <laughs> <laughs> if you see a uh, uh, nearly 300 pound man run around in a, with a, with a mask on, then you you know. <laughs> what, 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 what are you talking about? Who, who, who are you talking oh, about? Oh, I'm sorry. Who are you talking said, about that? I said nearly 300. I meant to say nearly 400. Cause Jay Jay passed the 300 mark. Y'all know that. Anyway, what? What? I'm not gonna say a word. Nothing. I'm the nice one. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. Anyway, and Mo Goody, if you haven't seen Mo Goody, he 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 ain't that tall, but he got a little pot on him. You know what I'm saying? So you can't miss baby fat out there either. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, we're being brought to you by the Playbook. Follow us on Twitter at Playbook Athlete. 
Travis, the moment that everybody has been waiting for. Yeah. One minute with Travis. So let yeah. me hold. Let me get, yeah, let me get my clock ready. All right, it's on. Go. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to talk about basketball today. I know you all. You never do. You uh, talk about soccer. <laughs> I, that one time you you you, you railroaded me. Oh, on that was that. terrible. And soccer and I'm not going to talk about anything about that yeah. today. I'm going to talk about an uh, article that I just saw came out about an hour, hour and a half ago. Uh, mm -hmm. The New England Patriots have been accused of uh, more cheating and Spygate. Okay. Uh, that the Cincinnati okay. Bengals, who they play on Sunday, uh, caught them. Uh, there was apparently a New England Patriots uh, employee that was there that had a camera filming the Cincinnati Bengals coaches during the first quarter and was taking film of them to relay the messages of what their hand signals were. For it the game. Say. So I just thought that was funny because, look, they're the Patriots or the Bengals. We've won one game, and I'd love to see what's going to happen after yeah. this, So Okay. Well, first of all, I'm just going to make a quick comment on this before we move on to the meet. Seriously. I mean, do you honestly think the Patriots were trying to cheat to beat the Bengals? I mean, come on now. The, the, I mean, I mean, they uh, have video footage of the of the Patriots come on. with a video camera I know. That, straight at the coaches of the Bengals while they're uh, doing play calls. That's like the, that's game. like the the Saints or say the uh, the uh, 49ers mm -hmm. are, are trying to cheat to beat the Falcons. <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on now. I mean, some things are believable. Some things ain't even believable. No. That, I mean, that to me ain't even believable. But you know, I mean, everybody out to get the uh, the, the Patriots. Everybody wants to say the Patriots cheat, this, that, and the other. So knock yourself out. I mean, well, if, if that's what you think, the, the, what's the Cincinnati Bengals record? One and 11. Oh, my God. One and 11. That, and that's why it's crazy one that they're doing it to play the Bengals next week. Exactly. They're one and 11. Now, what I heard was, and Bilicek said, listen, those people, we don't even talk to those people mm -hmm. to do that. They, those, that's a video crew that's doing like a documentary or something, and, and they got the permission. Bengals? Wait a minute. They got permission from them. To be able to go over there and film. I mean, it's not like a crew just shows up and be like, oh yeah, come out right on in the press box, guys. I mean, they had permission, obviously, to go up there and film. Dude, you know as well as I do. NFL security is way too strong for somebody just to go and sit up in a doggone press box in a stadium and you're not even playing today. I mean, your team ain't even playing today. What are you doing I know. here? I know. I mean, so they had permission to be up there. I think this is going to wind up being just an overblown nothing. Okay. Because, like I said, if you think that they need to have that, you know, and, and, and Cincinnati got a whole lot about other stuff they need to be worrying about. Worry about your 1-11 record. Do something about that. We are. I guess everybody cheats against y'all. <laughs> no. Is that what we're it is? Bad team. That's, okay. That's part now, of my point. So now the coach is going to say, now that I look back on it, everybody has come up in here and filmed us during the year. That's why we're – one and uh, eleven, right? Because everybody has done that, right? That's the biggest bunch of caca I've ever heard in my life. I mean, find another reason for why your ass can't win a game. <laughs> That's what you need to do. We're taking coach, we're taking for Joe Burrow. They're terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, you need to be, you we need are. to be, you need to be taking for, for 10 other people because <laughs> Joe Burrow don't want to come there. If I was Joe Burrow, I'd be like, Hell no, you pulling I am not dang skipping because I am not going to no doggone Cleveland. I guarantee you that, that or Cincinnati, same thing. <laughs> I mean, they played each other this week. What was the score? Three to nothing? I mean, good God almighty. 31 to 7. That should never be allowed. They should never be allowed to play each other. I'm telling you right now. I know they're in the same division. They they're still the should be. State. They still shouldn't be allowed to play each other. Because that is the worst game ever. And name, name, name one time that game meant something. One time in the history of football did that game mean something. You can't. Because that is a trash game. <laughs> See, I told y'all I wasn't going to get gassed up here today, Travis. And you're going to piss me off now because you want to blame the losing on the doggone uh, 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 New England Patriots. <laughs> Patriots yeah. You got to be kidding yeah, me. Come on yeah. here. All I'm saying, less, where there's smoke, there's fire. They've done it in the past, and I think they just got caught again. But we'll see what happens out of it. Okay. You keep on thinking that. Come okay. on here and do this college stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, college football. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, some of these championship games on Saturday. So we're going to start off with the SEC championship game. Uh, of course, we know LSU blew out Georgia. Uh, did Joe Burrow just lock up the Heisman? He may have. I mean, and I think I think he played very well. Uh, he's faster than I thought he was. I saw him running away from some people that I didn't think he could run away from. Um, but here's my big thing, and, and this is what my, I was disappointed about. And I, I was on the text message back and forth with several – 
Georgia alumni when I say your team just quit. Uh-huh. I mean, you can see everything about those kids was like, we're done. Okay. And that is bad for a coach. That is bad for a university. That is bad for those players and everything when they just flat out quit. Mm-hmm. For instance, we were being blown out the other night, too. I think at halftime, the score was up 42 to 14. Okay. I went in there, and you know what my message was to my kids? Do not quit. Right. Go out this half and play the very best that you can play. Right. Whatever that looks like. Because you will hate yourself for the rest of your life if you don't. Yeah. And you need to go out and give everything you've got and, and just absolutely sell out and let that be the memory mm-hmm. of your last high school game. Yeah. Not that I laid down and I quit and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I saw that the other night out of those yeah. Georgia players. I'm not going to lie to you. And, I mean, who's at fault? Well, the head coach always got to fall on the sword and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I guarantee you that Jimbo was not happy in the, after that game right. at the performance that his team had, especially – once I think once I, I can't remember exactly which which touchdown it was. Right. I I distinctly remember watching the body language and everything when LSU scored. What Georgia felt like, okay, it's over, yeah. and you could just see them kids just totally just just lay down check out. And, and check out. And it was it was it was really bad. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead. Uh, next ACC championship game. Can anyone stop? Oh, I knew that was gonna be a laugh. I told you. Can anyone that. stop Clemson? Oh yeah, somebody can stop Clemson. There's a lot of people can stop Clemson. But uh, but like I said, Clemson's gonna be tough. I'm yeah. not saying, but but Clemson is beatable. Anybody's beatable. Right. Any, any given yeah. any given Saturday now. Jimbo's being a good job, like he said. He said y'all are giving me free gas because mm-hmm. I'm just pouring yeah. the gas on the fire because you, because all y'all are doing is is, is making my kids angry by the stuff you're saying, the ratings you're giving us. Mm-hmm. You know, you're ranking us down here, number whatever. Last year's champ. Hadn't lost a game this year, right. and y'all ranking all these folks over us and, and all this talk and everything else. So just keep on pouring that gas on that fire. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I think that LSU will manhandle uh, Oklahoma. Yep, and we're going to get to this, yeah. It, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, my yeah, bad. You, you're good. You're but good. LSU will manhandle Oklahoma in, in the two big games. Mm-hmm. And I believe that. I'm, I'm going to take, believe it or not, I'm going to take Ohio State. Okay. I'm going to take Ohio State over, over Clemson. Okay. I think Ohio State is going to have a little bit more ground than pound, right. which will keep Trevor uh, Lawrence right. off the field, right. <clears throat> give uh, Clemson some limited chances, mm-hmm. and I think their defense is good enough to come up with just enough stops to hold them off. Okay. You know I cannot stand that, though. You know that. Yeah. I, I'm a South Carolina well, I fan. South Carolina. I, I, right. Yeah. But I – for all the rhetoric that I've had to listen to that guy talk for the last umpteen years, mm-hmm. I can't stand him. Go Dabo. But I like that's I, Dabo. I just like you even more yeah, now. Exactly. Yeah. But mm-hmm. he is playing this this whole nobody wants to play us. Nobody does. Woe is us because we're number three and we haven't lost yep. in thirty games or whatever. Yep. You just listen to Paul Feinbaum. That's all. Go ahead. I I I, I will get no. I do not yeah. listen to Paul Feinbaum. Yeah, you like Feinbaum? No, I don't. You um, look like him a little bit. <laughs> my mustache. Um. I will say he is playing this correctly. Uh, I will give him credit on this because he's got those kids fired up. They are playing a lot better now than they did the first four or five games of the year because I thought the first four or five games of the year they were clearly going to lose at least one game because they they weren't prepared. They should have lost the North Carolina game, and I think that woke him up, and he's been riding the nobody disrespect, nobody wants us, they don't want to see us. I think it's – I will give him credit. I think it's a masterful coaching job. What you he's know, doing to motivate his kids. You know the matter. hardest game it is to coach for a coach. Hmm. It's not against your rival. For instance, if you're Auburn, it's easy to get your kids up for the Alabama game. You're right. You know the hardest game it is to get your, your team up for? When you're playing when Alabama you, State. Well, exactly. When you're playing the worst team on your schedule, that is the hardest game, game to get your kids up mm-hmm. for. And, that I mean, that's obviously, you know, just a bait sitting there ready for you to, to get upset or whatever. But it is very difficult. It is extremely difficult to play against some of the team that Clemson's playing against because they know they're going to beat the brakes off of them. And it, it's very hard to, to get motivated to go out there and be, you know, lights out and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of those teams, though, will rise to the occasion. Yep. When they got to play somebody else. Yep. Anyway, give me a rundown of some of these games so I can tell you all who's going to win. Okay. First of all, let me say this before we go any further. And this is for Mo and Felicia Goodson. Nobody cares about USC versus Iowa. 
I mean, that's got to be the worst game on the docket. It's not. I mean, There's some terrible ones. I, I know some bad ones out there. <laughs> but even that's like the San Diego Credit Union Bowl. What Point is that? Point Bowl, yes. I mean, but that but it's sponsored by San Diego Credit Union. I mean, who does that? I mean, what are they going to give them from a San Diego Credit Union? <laughs> They're going to give them some pins? I mean, you know, most Key every, Yeah, keychain. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's just crazy. They have all these bowls, uh -huh. and that's why you'll never see – uh, them get away from it, right? Because all those bowls, oh, they gonna give them something. They gonna give everybody mm -hmm. something, and this they gonna give them a little bit of cash and all that kind of stuff. That's what every kid is gonna get. Every kid is gonna get about five hundred dollars in cash, gift cards, okay, or whatever cards. gift cards, whatever the hell it is. It'll be something similar to cash. Uh -huh. It'll be something they can use like cash. Yep. And you know they might give them a five hundred dollar Visa card. You know whatever. But my whole point is, is that that is why they will not go to. This big old 64 team championship, like they do March Madness and all that. Ain't gonna it's, do that. It's too hard to do for college football anyway. It's too hard to do for college football, but because you'd have to have teams playing like the day after. Yes. The, what and you can't do that. Yeah, in football. You can't do that. Football. football gets too beat up and all that, so yep. you can't do that. But on top of that, they give away too much stuff to these kids and these and these coaches and everybody's getting that day. And that's why they have bowls like USC versus Iowa. <laughs> I mean, dude, I'm just keeping it real. It's like I said to Mo Good the other day. They got the whole city of Iowa right now. Iowa City right now. They're packing up all them chuck wagons, getting ready to start a mule train, and head to San Diego, wherever that damn bowl is being played. And then when they yeah, – am, am I right or wrong, Travis? And then USC, whatever, you know, 200 fans they got left <laughs> – that are still loyal to USC, uh -huh. they're going to pack up and get drunk and drive down there. And at the end day, nobody's going to be watching that game on TV. Nobody. I will. So what would the sponsor? Okay, tell me the one guy. So uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Credit Union guy, just just call Travis directly and talk to him about joining your credit union. <laughs> that's all the advertising you're going to get. I mean, why? I can't wait to see the Nielsen. We need to get the Nielsen rating uh, on these doggone bowl okay, games. Okay. And let's see how many people are going to watch that bowl game. Because okay. even, even people who like USC ain't going to watch it. Uh -huh. I mean, they, they're still trying to figure out how that coach kept his job. Because they announced that he's going to keep his job. Todd Hilton's going to keep his job. Uh -huh. Anyway, come on. Uh, we are going to get to the bowl games, but I was going to save that for next week after we get a week. That'd be fine. So that way we can go through some of these bowl games. And I ain't going to miss one of them. Okay. Not on one. Okay. So, I, by the way, I was going to beat the brakes off of USC. I agree. Um, but I did want to talk uh, – the Final Four, of course, came out, as, as we kind of talked about, LSU, Ohio State, Clemson, Oklahoma. Yep. Do you think they got it right? Top four, you think that was the right yeah, – come, right, right, right. come on now. I know if you watch this show, you had to have a laugh when Utah lost to Oregon. I mean, come I on now. I did. Come on now, y'all. Like, oh, boy, I can't wait. I know Coach Moore going to have fun with that. Is that not the Pac-12 – I mean, is that not the predictable Pac-12? You had every chance <laughs> mm -hmm. to actually get in and be in the day. Alabama all, opened the door wide open. All you had to this do was wide. one game. All you had to do was win one game. All you had to do was beat a, a sorry Oregon. They ain't even good. And everybody's talking about, oh, they they, they gave Pac-12, uh, 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 Utah, every reason. Why they were gonna give people hell in this four person player or fourteen playoff mm -hmm. because uh oh they got the size, they got the strength, they got monsters here, yeah. the quarterback is so superlative, and then not only did they lose, they got the brakes beat off. <laughs> I mean it was it wasn't even close. It wasn't worth watching after the third quarter. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, dude, I was just I couldn't even I was laughing so hard, I couldn't hardly breathe. Yeah. I could not almost choke watching that game. From laugh. That, that's a that's a dog of shame. Poor Pac-12. Y'all are the worst. Y'all are. I mean, it, it's just really sad. And I mean, UCLA. I mean, it, all y'all just awful, awful conference. R Richard Hood is saying that Oklahoma is going to win the whole thing. So. Yeah, well, that ain't right, Richard. And I love you, Rich. You know, you my dog. But Oklahoma ain't gonna win. I don't know who is, but I know who ain't. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't gonna be them. Cause they got to play LSU first. Come on, Richard. You know better than that. Ding ding. Here we go. All right, folks, we're going to uh, – oh, we got to take a little break. Yep. You listen to Straight from the Hip. I'm your host, Coach Gerald Boo Mitchell. Coming to you live from Sugar Hill, Georgia. Here with my co-host, Mr. Trav Butler. Folks, we're trying to get your comments in. Terry, I know you've been sounding off and Travis hasn't been reading them. 
And I'm a little upset with Travis about that. Uh -huh. I know Terry been talking to me because Terry always give me some good insight, and she always give me a little a little uh, key, a little trigger that I can go off on. So Terry, just keep on keep on sending them comments, baby. I know you're out there. Uh, we're being brought to you by the Playbook Frost on Twitter at Playbook Athlete. Jason Allen not here today. Uh, he's out there saving the world. Uh, you know black man's out there, and they already know blacks out there. But uh, Jason called himself out there trying to, you know, I think he may be protecting a bakery somewhere or something, doing something like that. Mm. Come on, what we got, Trevor? Uh, overreaction about, Monday. Overreaction Monday. Talk about these uh, NFL games. Come on. So Give it to me. First one, 49ers beat the Saints. 49ers are the best team in the NFC. Oh, I, I think that, you know, I said that that's just round one. They'll probably wind up being the, the top two teams that have to play each other in the NFC uh -huh. Championship. And it's hard to beat a team two times in, uh, in, in one year like that. So right. so we'll see. But, yeah, I'm not saying they're the best just yet. And I'm a 49ers fan. Yeah, you are. Y'all know that. I've said yep. that for years. But I'm just not believing you. I just, Garoppolo, I can't get down with Garoppolo. I keep trying, but I can't. I, I think this was a huge game for the 49ers because if the Saints had won this game, you'd be playing – in the Superdome, in the NFC Championship game, you know, more than likely. No, man. And, 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 and I think that would have been a, a big problem for the 49ers. The fact that 49ers now have home field advantage. We all know that, that the Drew Brees and the Saints play way better at home than on the road, okay. especially in the playoffs. I think this really does help them. I'm not going to say they're the best team yet, but they're, they're if one, if not two. Okay. So. Come on. Uh, Bears beat the Cowboys. Trubisky saved his job. Dak is worth, not worth the money. I don't think Trubisky saved his job. I, I'm not going to say Dak isn't worth the money either. Um, I, I, if, if if I was a coach or GM, Trubisky wouldn't have saved his job. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is Jimmy Jones needs uh, – uh, Jones. Uh, John, uh, Jer Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones, thank you. I was thinking about Jimmy yeah. Johnson. Jerry Jones needs to go ahead and fire. I mean, I think that would put a lot of stuff at ease. And and the offensive coordinator is terrible. Yeah, he needs to be fired too. Kellen Moore, whatever his name is, because yeah. they said that uh, Dak Prescott, how many yards he had in the first half? He was averaging almost seven or eight yards a carry. Yeah. Then he only touched the ball five times in the second half. Yeah. Who does that? Yeah. That, they, Who does that? They have not been running. That's Zeke ridiculous. This almost probably the last half of, half of the yeah. year, and it has just been the Dak show. And I think yeah. that is the problem. I think that's the reason why they're losing so many games, is because they're throwing the ball too much not running the clock with Zeke and that big offensive line that they have, and which is causing the defense of Dallas to play more, which if, you know, Dallas's weakness is their defense, so they're getting tired more, and that's why they're losing so many close games. Yeah, so, come on, move on, let's go. Browns beat the Bengals. <clears throat> yeah, I know. More than 100 people watch this game. Should Andy Dalton just resign and we just – Tank for two. Uh, no, slash dude, Joe Burrow. I, nobody cared about that. What's next? Go on to the next one. Joe Burrow, that's who I want. I ain't even going to make mm -hmm. no uh, – Thank. hopefully not. Go. Ravens beat the Bills. Ravens' defense is a concern. They really don't stop anybody. And that's true. But Lamar Jackson didn't put enough enough points. And, Jason, to your uh, to your uh, logic you said the other day, that's the way a lot of teams do. A lot of successful teams actually make it to the Super Bowl. You know, and, and it's because they, they, they outscore people to do whatever. So, anyway, go ahead. Terry Davis says to fire Garrett. <clears throat> uh, Falcons actually won a game and beat the Panthers. Fly like a Falcon inspired them to win. Oh, they're probably, that, that's probably true right there. But this is my thing about it. You know, all Falcons fans, they're so happy because you finally got a W. But look who you beat. <laughs> you beat a team that doesn't even have a coach. <laughs> the coach that had been fired. The quarterback been on injury reserve since, like, game two. And y'all are celebrating beating a team like that. I mean, uh -huh. seriously. And backup quarterback, too. I mean, you, that, but that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, they haven't had their quarterback all year. And y'all are so excited just because that's how thirsty you are for winning. Vic Beasley, you should see Vic Beasley. Vic Beasley was running around like he had won the lottery because he had two sacks the other day. Yeah. That's what you should be doing every game. That's what they pay you for. That's your job. Like, the, the, you ever hear do your job, like they say uh, in, in New England? That's your job. Welcome, Vic Beasley, to your job. You finally did your job. Unbelievable. Come on. Uh, Packers beat the, the Redskins. Matt LaFleur is not a good head coach because the Titans offense is better than the Packers right now. I agree. But but Matt LaFleur, he, he yeah, he – don't, a lot of these guys ain't ready to be NFL coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you know, they're just a short pool, small pool. And, uh, and and some of these guys, they're, they're letting be coaches. They have no business being a coach. Uh, Casey Mitchell says that the Falcons fans aren't happy because they want a top five draft pick. 
Yeah, but y'all, 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 y'all probably still gonna get a, a top five draft pick because you still probably gonna lose most of your games. I mean, uh, Jameis Winston the other day threw three <laughs> interceptions and they still won the game. That's true. So I mean, they, they'll find a way to beat y'all. And I mean, y'all's only hope really is is to win games like that. You won't be if do they have to play the Saints again? Because you know you ain't gonna beat the Saints. No, they they, they play the 49ers on Sunday. Okay, but well that we we already know what's gonna happen there. Uh, that I know they play the Tampa Bay Bucks. Yeah. And uh, I don't know the other team. Somebody, okay. somebody type in who they're. Casey last... Lesnar. Yeah, Casey, Casey let, let us know who that other game but is. But y'all, y'all will probably still be in, in the running for that 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 top five slot. Mm-hmm. I bet you that. But go ahead. Uh, Broncos beat the Texans. This kind of loss is why the Texans will never be Super Bowl champions under Bill O'Brien. Yeah, that was that was a terrible loss right there. That, uh, that was a bad loss. Right? That may, that may keep them out of the playoffs. Yeah, keep that, rolling. That, that, that loss right there. Uh, Vikings beat the Lions. Vikings are the most dangerous team in the NFC. I don't know about that. Uh, I, I don't think they have a good enough quarterback for that, but keep moving. We ain't going to talk about that. Nobody cares. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jets beat the Dolphins. The NFL should adapt the tie rule so these don't have, so these two teams don't have to play. Amen. But that, I agree. That's that's also a big stinker right there. But keep on moving. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> Bucks beat the Colts without Mike Evans. The offense is better. Well, that's because uh, James Winston ain't looking for him on every play. Yeah. Because he's a diva and he wants the ball every play and whatnot. But that's still. I mean, that was shocking to me that the Colts would even allow that. But the, the the Bucks are just awful. Like I said, and they win a game by throwing three interceptions. I mean, that, that might be a record right there. <laughs> James Winston might be the best quarterback ever in the NFL to win games by throwing more than two interceptions. We'll keep moving. Real, real quick, do you think they keep <clears throat> James at the end of the season? No. Okay. Not if they have any kind of sense. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chargers beat the Jaguars. Time to fire Doug Marone. It's been time. Keep going. Chiefs beat the Patriots. This Patriots team needs to – uh, play like the game manager Brady Pats of the first three years, uh, first three championships. This is what I'm. This is what I'm gonna say to you, and this this was my first time ever thinking it might be time for Brady to retire, because the way I saw him throwing the ball the other day was was not good. Mm-hmm. Um, he was making bad decisions who he was throwing it to, but he was also throwing it off his back foot a lot when he had time to step up in there and actually throw it, and so. Uh, this, this that to me is an indication it's time for him to go, okay. and I hope that he will go ahead and go, you know, just while he's on top and his game is on top, okay. and not be the Eli Manning who's supposedly starting tonight. How painful is that? <laughs> what idiot is out there watching <laughs> Eli Manning right now start? I'm getting ready to go watch wrestling when I get done. Yeah. Or, or go watch Love and Hip Hop, or go find, or go watch Scrabble or something, or or, or or some game show network. Because I would never watch Eli Manning play. I would watch Eli Manning uh, except – and I would not watch Eli Manning do anything, let alone play football. That's Richard crazy. Richard Hood says the uh, Patriots are done. Uh, what's the score of that uh, Giants-Eagles game? Somebody type that in, please. Nobody care. I care. Uh, Steelers beat the Cardinals. Mike Tomlin's the coach of the year. I, well, hey, he my coach of the year just he about may every be. year. He may be. I've been saying that. I'm glad to see Jason – Coming around, he, finally giving him some love. Yesterday we were watching the game, and he, he couldn't stop gushing about how good Mike Tomlin was this year. There you so, go. Uh, Titans beat the Raiders. Titans are the most dangerous team in the AFC with Derrick Henry. Yeah, but they can't throw the ball. I mean, and if you, they're, they're one-dimensional, so no. I don't I don't think they have the composite. They're, they're a one-man show. You think I don't, so? Yeah, I don't, okay. I, don't, I don't like that at all. You know with Tannehill, they're like 6-1 yeah. and one in the, ever since he came, ever since I know. he took over. But so. Tannehill has run more than he's thrown the ball. I mean, he's been a runner. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to win like that. you gotta have a, you got to have an air attack. So I don't, I don't believe they can do it. Okay. Uh, Rams beat the Seahawks. This loss knocks Russell Wilson out of the MVP race. I said the same thing. That's like I told you. I, I was shocked to see that because, really, I picked the Seahawks to win that one. I, I mean, you. privately, just me. I did, I will admit that. See, a lot of y'all think y'all be sitting there, no, nah, I picked all the women. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. And I don't either. I miss every now and then on one. And that's one I missed on. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Um, and last one, Monday Night Football, Giants-Eagles. The Eagles will win and propel them to win the division. Nobody cares. No, nobody cares about this game going on tonight. You know what? The Eagles should win. And shame on them if they don't win. Uh-huh. Um, they should win the NFC East because – Dallas is a dumpster fire. <laughs> they definitely don't uh, want it. Uh, who else is it? Uh, Washington. Uh, Washington Redskins are terrible. Mm-hmm. I mean, just just god awful. I mean, what kind of division that? That's almost as bad 
and Cincinnati's division. Who is it? Cincinnati, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and who else? Baltimore. Baltimore. Baltimore obviously is going to be be the class of that division. Yeah. But like I said, hopefully, you know, Pittsburgh might be able to get in there, uh-huh. you know, be a wild card team or something if, 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 if they can. Hopefully. Hopefully they will. But it, but it won't be them other two. It won't be them other two. Y'all heard Odell Beckham say he's getting ready to go out. Y'all yeah. heard that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, all right, folks, we got right on time. We got just enough time for me to get my little coach's corner. So let me just say this to you. Who said at the beginning of the season? Who told y'all that all that love and joy down there in, uh, what do they call it, Mudville, uh, 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 Casey struck out, Casey at the bat, but there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. I told y'all that was going to happen. Everybody was so happy at Cleveland. Oh, we got all these superstars. Got Baker Mayfield. Got Odell Beckham. Got uh, Jarvis Landry. Nick oh, Chubb. it's on. Got Nick Chubb. Got the defense. Oh, it's on and popping now in uh in, in in Cleveland. Cleveland is the place to be. A lot of people, Vegas. I think Vegas even said that the odds for Cleveland to get to the Super Bowl were higher than for the Cowboys to get to the yep. Super Bowl. Craziness, madness. I'm sitting up there like. Have they legalized marijuana in every state? I mean, these people all over this country have been smoking weed if they think that Cleveland is going to actually do something. First of all, they, they got that hillbilly out there being the head coach. I don't know where he came from. He's terrible. And then Baker Mayfield, make, I don't know what Baker did. Somebody anointed Baker Mayfield mm-hmm. and told him, that he was the, I guess, gave him part ownership in the team. Because <laughs> he's going around there criticizing everything. Yep. Everything. I mean, just going off on people like he's an owner or something. And then, lo and behold, and I said it was going to happen. I told y'all it was going to happen. I said, yeah, Odell Beckham and Jarvis, oh, they happy. They they glad for their little reunion. Oh, yeah, we college buddies. And I said, wait till one of them don't start getting the ball. Or wait till one of them to get, get the ball as much as the other one. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen? Odell Beckham going to start going off. Now news comes out, Odell Beckham says he wants out. He wants out of Cleveland. Dude, I mean, what were y'all thinking? I never would have picked no Odell Beckham because of that very reason. Unless you're somebody like the Dallas Cowboys who can afford that kind of nonsense and that kind of food. Cleveland can't afford that. Uh-huh. Cleveland can't afford that. Jerry Jones can afford that. Cleveland can't afford that. And now he's just going to be a lightning rod. For, for, for garbage, because you know what? Once he makes a statement like that, guess what happens? Every TMZ, every Inquirer magazine, everybody running around ready to stick a microphone up his butt and, and want to talk to him, want to hear what he has to say, because they know sooner or later he's going to make an ass out of himself. Yep. And they're just waiting for that moment so they can get that sound bite and they can, put, they can tweet it and text it and put it on the news and, and sell it to – TMZ and all these other people because they know the beginning of the end is coming. And I told y'all this from the beginning. But as usual, you don't listen. You do not listen to me. You Falcon fan, just like the Falcon fan, don't listen. All you Cleveland fans, uh, Bree, Bree Smith, Dave Smith, uh, Dave, I hope you're not. I'm, I'm take that back, Dave. Let me let me take that off. Let me take that back. I hope you're not a, a Cleveland fan, Dave. Joe Fleischer, diehard Cleveland fan. <laughs> All you morons down there who talk <laughs> about you, some doggone Cleveland fan, had the, had the audacity to tell me they were going to make it to the Super Bowl. And that's what I say to you then. I say, you gonna make it to the toilet bowl. That's about it. And that's exactly what you're, what's Cleveland, what, what's Cleveland record? Three and what? Is it like three and nine or three and ten? Four wins. Okay, four and nine, whatever. Yeah. Who raved for Cleveland? And again, they're talking about, same thing as the Falcon fan. Oh, we still gonna run the table. <laughs> and we go, man, please. Sad. Absolutely sad. So y'all don't tell me that kind of stuff anymore. But anyway, no, I'm not I'm off the Falcon just for the night. Just for the night, I'm off the Falcon. Enjoy your little win, KC. Like one. Enjoy your little win, Mr. Peavy. I mean, and and, and then what KC say. Oh, I'm kind of mad we won. Oh, my God. <laughs> Who mad did they win? That's what I'm talking about. That's a Falcon fan. That's a Falcon fan. Mad at your team for winning. Lord, have mercy. Poor, that's what the players have to deal with. Uh-huh. Players have to – mad if we win, mad if we uh-huh. lose. Bless your heart. Players don't even know if they should win or not because exactly. the fans like y'all. Yeah.
Thank you, Falcon fans. I love you. Mwah. Love the Falcon fans. Anyway, folks, we got to get out of here. I know real quick. It's Come on. It's because they fly like a falcon. I know, fly like a falcon, baby. I'm telling you, I'm about to make, I'm about to make that up. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm about to go platinum with that little record right there. Fly like a falcon. If you boy. missed it, it's on YouTube. Yeah. It's on our Facebook page. If you miss that song, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's hilarious. Coach so. Boo, murder the hit, murder the hit, fly like a falcon. Y'all, y'all get, y'all get the copy of it. It's, it's a great song. Yeah. Anyway, folks, we got to get out of here. We are gonna see y'all next week. I'm assuming Jay and uh, Mo Good here be in the building. Tavion, you can stop uh, sending messages for your dad now, son. You can go ahead and go to bed. Anyway, folks, we got to get out of here. We'll see y'all next week. Uh, good night, Miss Francis. Straight from the hip. Oh, my goodness. <laughs>